I've been going to Syria for um, quite a number of years now. I visited Syria um, several times before the conflict began. I think in 2003 I started going to Syria. And before the conflict took several groups to Syria, um, church groups from around the country, meeting with um, church leaders and Muslim leaders and visiting the sites in the country and also meeting the local communities. And that's where my, my interest in the country started off, not just in visiting the sites, but actually meeting the country, uh, meeting people um, and visiting the, the, the communities. Um, and really learning, falling in love with the country in many ways and being fascinated by the, the depth of the history and the diversity of the country and the plurality and the, the plurality of the country as well, the communities within it. And I'll come to that in a moment. In 2010, we went on a family holiday um, to Syria, hired a car with three children and, and drove all around the country and visited all the sites as, as a holiday. <coughs> Um, and source begins, began to feel some of the um, tensions that are beginning to emerge then. And one and a half million Iraqi refugees were being hosted in the cities in Syria. And these, of course, were, were mostly Sunni Muslims from different, a very different background in Iraq coming into the cities. You also had in that time a long-standing drought that happened across the north of Syria, what used to be called the breadbasket of Mesopotamia in the northeast. Um, I saw it in the years prior to the conflict where one million people had been displaced from the rural areas of the northeast and were in the cities. So there was a lot of tension bubbling up, in the, in the, particularly in the urban areas. But at the same time, in 2010, my wife will verify this, there was an enormous sense of hope as well. Um, tourist sites were being upgraded, tourist hotels were being built, roads were being improved, the infrastructure of towns and cities was being improved. We visited schools, we visited churches, people were quite excited. They were saying reforms are happening and okay, they might be a bit slow, but they're happening. And we even had one, one person say, come back in five years time, this was 2010, and Syria will be the beacon of the Middle East. So much is happening and so much is developing. And so when 2011 happened, it was, a, it was a huge shock. And actually, from what we had seen, it didn't make sense. When I first had the opportunity in 2014, uh, I was invited to join a faith delegation to Syria. I jumped at the chance because I could not understand what I was hearing in the media and seeing in the media. I di it did not make any sense. And I thought, well, ha I have to go and see for myself, listen to as many people as possible and see what the realities on the ground are. And so I went and, and actually haven't looked back. Um, I've now been 10 times to Syria since 2014, April 2014. The experience of Syria before the conflict and then in, from 2014, particularly the engagement of the Muslim and Christian communities in the midst of the conflict, inspired me to st undertake and start study. So I'm now on the, uh, the end of a two, uh, the end of the second of three years, um, PhD doctoral research into Christian Muslim relations in Syria. And so a lot of my time in Syria, when I'm in Syria, has been spent with Christian communities and Muslim communities and religious leaders across the spectrum, um, meeting with them, talking with them, and with communities on the ground in the forefront, at the front lines as well.